I would like us to open the word of God to Jeremiah chapter 1 and I will read from verse 5. Ziba Kuske Kalaga Zikara. Jeremiah chapter 1 and I read from verse 5. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 1 verse 5. Before I found you in the world, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. So it is not the day that the baby came out in the hospital. That was the first day that God knew. Him. Uh -huh. No, he already knew the baby before he sculptured the baby in the world of the world. Of the world. I feel the presence of God. Psalm 139, verse 14. I will praise you. Why? For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well, and that my soul knows very well. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Not, 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 not that you, not that, you, not, not that you are fragile. No, it means that you are a wonder to the world. You are an amazement to the world. You, you are, the glory of the Lord is upon you so much so that people lack word to describe it. And I'm fearfully. In other words, there is something about you. There is something about you that 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 that, that manifests the glory and the fearfulness and the fearsomeness of God. The Lord is about to unveil His glory in your life. I would like you to also join me as I go to Ezekiel, Ezekiel 12, 22, 28, rather. Ezekiel 12, 28. Ezekiel 12, 28. Are we here? Am I right? Yes, I am right. Therefore, say to them, to the church, to the power and international, Thus says the Lord God, none of my words will be postponed anymore. Amen. But the word which I speak will be done, says the Lord. Amen. Now, if you read it, I don't know which version, yes, thank you. Bless you. Please, uh, NIV. NIV, please. NIV. Therefore, say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. None of my works will be delayed any longer. Now, look at your neighbor and say, there is no longer a delay in your life. There is no more delays in your life. There shall be no more delays in your life. Please help me as we go to Revelation. Revelation chapter 10. Revelation chapter 10. And we'll read from 4 to 6. Revelation chapter 10. And we'll read from 4 to 6. Now, when the seven thunders uttered their voices, I was about to write. 
But I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, See Lord, the things which the seven thunders are and do not write them. That's fine. The angel whom I saw standing on the sea and on the land raised up his hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that I need, the earth and the things that I need, and the sea and the things that I need. And there should be delay no longer. Someone said, no more delay. No more delay. Someone said, no more delay. No more delay. Someone said, no more delay. No more delay. Please help me open your tongue and speak in tongues. So Rabas and Kaya. Ekras la brakos e la karoske. Ekraduma la kasadi. Rakratuski kapakakos. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Yeah. As when we are coming to church this morning, just at the river road, on Bishop Brandon, River Road at on Bishop Brandon at River Road. I was stopped by uh, by a traffic light. It was red, so we stopped. But beside me was was a convertible Corvette, and it looked like 2019 Corvette. It didn't look like the old Corvette. So it was a sharp Corvette. Praise the Lord. And we are waiting for the green light to come. When the green light came, before I marched, the guy was. Hallelujah! I said to myself, what was happening? Amen. Now, what made that covet <laughs> drive like that? Didn't just enter into that covet. It came from the manufacturer's strength. It came from the company. It didn't happen even at the dealership. It came from the company that manufactured the covet. It didn't happen in Winnipeg. Hallelujah. What made my own tsunami? What made it not grown like Tobet was also inside it. Yeah. Everything 
The Bible says, for, for, for the anointing has given us everything that we need in to live a godly life. Everything. Hallelujah. And what is that thing? What has God given you? What has God given me? A gift. Somebody say a gift. Yes. Somebody say a gift. Yes. The Bible says that children are gifts. A gift from God. It's not, it's not your physical child. It is not a physical child. It is what that is inside the child. It's what the child carries. Hell sent army to kill children. Because the matter I told her, told him that a king has been moved. He killed children from age two to zero. What was he trying to kill? The seed of Abraham. The seed of Abraham. You are not just a woman. You are not just a man. You are a seed. Church, the Lord will help us to understand this today. You are a seed. And you carry a seed. So, when you're asking God, well, give me a child, give me a child. No, what you are actually asking God is give me a seed. For the Lord gave seed to the sower and bread to the eater. No, you are not asking God for bread. You are asking God for a seed. You are a seed. And everything that will make a mango seed to succeed is inside the mango seed. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, the people that began to teach us, they didn't teach us too well. Because they taught us, do this and you will succeed. They said seven steps to success. 18 steps to success. No. Success is already inside of you. Right. That's right. Amen. You don't learn to be successful. You manifest success. Why? Because your success is wrapped around your gift. And your gift it's what people are interested in, not you as a physical person. People are not attracted to you because you are handsome or beautiful. No, people come to you because of what you carry. I think about sometimes you see the sort of a picture of a you know, a man from, I guess, South Africa, very, you know, very handsome, you know, good. Huh? You remember that Facebook? That married, married a very beautiful woman. And the story was that the man was a, or is a millionaire. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. So you are not to be pitied. Hmm? You are not to say, oh, this kind of life. You are not, you are, you are not a second class, you are not a failure to any man. 
you are better off. Because you are a divine prophet. You are a supernatural prophet. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So it is inside of you. Now, if I mess up Serena Williams, right? What comes into your mind? You know what it is? That woman can play something. She really can play something. If I mention Tiger Woods, what comes into your mind? If I mention Michael Jackson, what comes into your mind? Music. And we ask you, Michael, do you like music? He said, I am music. I am music. What are you? What is your gift? The gift of a bird is flat. A bird doesn't learn how to fly. The first time my pastor in Lagos asked me to preach, I, I stammered as if I was a, a grand breaker. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Get that capacity! That thing means preaching. I was sweating. <laughs> Hallelujah! Yeah. The same people I knew, the same people I, 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 I ate with, but to open my mouth and teach the Bible to them, I was sweating in a small primary school class. And my mom came. And the first day, she's been hearing her son is a, is a, is a pastor. She said, until I see. And she came to Canada. We were kind of over there. And she sat at the back. And I was preaching as I'm preaching today. And she was just looking at me. And at the end of service, she said, Thank you, Lord God. I came and she said, Sit down. I said, And she said, God is born. I said, Mama, what happened? She said, You, that the stammers and the birds are flying. How is it that you can speak so smoothly and fluently and no stammering? What is your God? We are in that set time of summer. Your gift is what announces you. The gift of a fish is the ability, the capacity to There is no fish that learns how to swim. There is no fish that learns how to swim. They swim in schools, but they do not swim to school. Just follow me and I'm going to go. Hallelujah. Amen. So right where you are, you are like me. Because we have been deceived by employment. Your gift can be part of your profession. Like the doctor that is sitting. I know he's already a medical doctor. Hallelujah. The, the school he attended, the first university he went for his medical college, they said, they said, you're a doctor. The professor said, you are a doctor. We have the doctor's rotation. They say you are not, you you are a doctor. You are not you are not a student. You are a doctor. So your your gift might be what you are doing now. But how? Are you doing? Praise the Lord. 
The title of this message, as we all know, is No More Delays. No More Delays. No More Delays. So why does it why does it seem as if some are running like that covet and some are running like Sonata? <laughs> When you are comfortable where you are at, when you are uncomfortable, discontent is the power behind change. Somebody said discontent. 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 Hatred. So where you are, hatred for 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 the place you are in the days of the Lord, for the place you are in your profession, for the place you are even in, in financial terms. When you become uncomfortable, when you become on, Esau came crying. Crying to Isaac his father and said, Bless me. But he says, Sorry, sorry. Your brother has taken all the best. You will surely serve him and you will surely be a great man. He said, Bless me. Is it only one blessing you have? Bless me. And then finally, Isaac said, When you become restless. When, not how, when you become restless, you will break off this yoke of the leg. When you become what you don't hate, you tolerate. And what you tolerate, you cannot change. What you cannot change then becomes an enforced destiny on you. Why do I call it enforced? Because your destiny is hidden by God inside you. And God hid it inside you so you can find it. Hallelujah. He hid it where you can have access to and where you can easily. Somebody say my destiny is in me. Somebody say my destiny is in me. Somebody say my destiny is in me. I am becoming what God said I will become. No more delays. No more delays. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. Let's give Jesus a big hand. Hallelujah. So hate. Jesus didn't say hate others. No. But hate wickedness. He says, for because he hated wickedness. Therefore, the Lord his God has anointed him above his companions with the oil of gladness. Hate your status quo. Whether you're a pastor like me, or a single, or, or a member of a church, there is more. Somebody said there is more. I will go discover me. Say, I will go discover me. I will go discover me. Everything that you need is inside of you. The only work you need is discovering, refining, and manifesting. What sister Linda carries, I need it. What Tony is carrying, sister Linda, you need it. What Joshua carries, everybody needs it. What God has put this out of you, everybody wants it, needs it. It is not for you. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not what you carry, it's not for you. And why God sent you here? It's because of that thing that you carry. You are carrying something. Mm -hmm.
Hallelujah. You are coming. You are coming. You are coming. You know, for many of us that like automobile, and you go to a dealer shop, and you want to be dealer, they just went, they walk into the uh, to the parking lot. <laughs> but you remember what they want to say? This is no day. <laughs> this is no day. No day. This is auto reverse. <laughs> wi Fi. TV display. This is no day. People of God, I've come to tell you that you are fully loaded. Somebody say, I am fully loaded. And God loaded you by Himself before He released you to the earth. And the reason He released you is so that you would download what He loaded you with. So others, the whole generation, will be blessed. Jesus said, I did not come to be served, but I have come to serve and to give myself as what? As a nurse. Somebody said, Now, many people know intuitively that there could be more. Almost everybody knows. But for the you know for correctness, let me say many people know. Intuitively, I could be more. I could be more. I could, I could, I could actually get a little further than where I am now. I could I could be of much blessing to much people than I'm reaching out now. I could be more. So much I could be more. I could be more. Many people know that. Many people also know their gifts. Many know. Many are not in doubt. Many are not in doubt. Many know that God has called them maybe to be apostles, to be you know, to be professors, or maybe to be to be to be uh, prophets or pastors or evangelists. Many people know intuitively. And many people are making attempts. Amen. They're making attempts. They're working hard. They're trying to get there. They're making efforts. But it looks like each effort they make takes them back two steps. The more they try to get to where they, they, they know they are called to. The more obstructions, things unforeseen things are working against their efforts. Today, the Spirit of God, by the power of the Holy Ghost, will judge anything that is setting you back. The Bible says in Proverbs 13, verse 12. That hope deferred makes the heart sick. If each time you try to become something, something happens all of a sudden, and you go back. Each time you try, I began and you keep trying. It will get to a point that you are weak. You are tired. Sometimes many of us can't even pick a call. From a home country, because if it is not said in your telephone, you don't know who is calling. Because you are afraid. You don't know what news is coming. Even if it is somebody that you know from your family, the first thing that comes out of your mouth is everything okay? Is everything okay? Why? Because you have been beaten here, you have been beaten here. The Spirit of God is here. And He's going to set you free today. He will set you free today. 
He will set you free today. Amen. So when people keep trying and they keep falling, and they keep trying and they keep falling, what then is the result? The result is that people don't dream anymore. They don't dream anymore. They are frust that's, that's, that's the outcome of frustration. They don't dream anymore. They don't want to try. They don't want to, they, they, they don't want to stretch themselves. Because they don't want to fall anymore. They don't want to fail anymore. A life without a dream. Life without dreaming. Life without dreaming is not worthy of living. You must dream to become better. You must dream to become more fruitful. You must dream to bring more glory to Him. So, what causes the failure? What causes frustration? What causes it? For the lack of words, people call it curses. But when we say curse, what comes into our mind is somebody cursed you in your family or some, some member of your family did something and you're cursed. You know, some people are under spell. No. And then some people say, as a believer, that you can be under curse. Because Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 says, For Christ has become a curse for us. For the Bible says that he that hangs on a cross is cursed. Therefore, believers are not be cursed. And that is true. That is true. Someone said that is true. That is very, very correct. Jesus Christ took all our curses, including the ones in our family life, and nailed it on the cross of Calvary. And when he nailed it, what did he say? He said, it is, it is, Now, in the court of law, if a case is decided, there must be an enforcement of that case. You can't just say, this child now is under this person's custody, or this guy is under this person's custody. What the court will do is they will assign, there's a, there's a court person here, they will assign an enforcer, an agent, could be police, to, to make sure that that car goes to the right foot. Or to make sure that the other person that has lost the case does not enter into the house. Hallelujah. So that's an enforcement. That's why then we have the, the, uh, the enforcement agencies. Hallelujah. Amen. So now Jesus has given us the victory. We have the victory. Someone say, I have the victory. Someone say, I have the victory. Someone say, I have the victory. So you are. You are no more under the mercy of forces of that. So what is a cost then? A cost is spiritual force that the devil is using to sabotage the success and the future of believers. Spiritual force that the enemy uses to sabotage the success and the future of believers. Remember what I said earlier. Where is the success? And then where is the future? Your success is inside of you. Your future is already inside of you. So what the devil does is he will use anything to make sure 
that you you lose or you lack the internal energy, the the, the soup that 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 you will not take hold of the anointing of the Holy Ghost inside of you to manifest that success which is already inside of you, and to manifest the future which is inside of you. That's why many people when they fetish and 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 What the devil is trying to make them do is to give up. I failed my driving. I said it here, right? I failed it five times. The fifth time, you know what failed me? Stop sign. Stop sign. And I began to laugh because I know where this is coming from. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because even without Alexander by the side, 2 a.m., 1 a.m., I will stop at the stop <laughs> How come on that fifth trial or attempt, I will drive by the stop <laughs> I drove by and the man asked him, I said, What's happening? He said, Just go. <laughs> Somebody say, today, today I will become, I will become everything, everything that God, that God has called me to. I will do, I will do everything, everything that God, that God has called me to. Do. So how then do we overcome the forces of darkness? How then do we overcome the evil forces that want to sabotage? Our success and our future. Someone said, "The name of Jesus is a strong tower. The righteous run into it, and they are safe." Someone said, "The blood of Jesus is my weapon of warfare." For the Bible says, "If I see the blood, 